Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Well today, as you can probably tell, we're right by the sea. We're at Christchurch in Dorset and we're going to be walking a six mile there and back route from Highcliff Castle through a nature reserve, along the shore to Muddiford Quay, across to Muddiford Sands by ferry, and then on to explore Hengitsbury Head and another nature reserve. And <laughs> we might even be taking a noddy train on the homeward journey. Now I'm filming in June. It is a glorious sunny day. Hardly a cloud in the sky. Should be perfect conditions for walking to come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at the Steamer Point car park and we're going to make our way to Highcliff Castle. But before we do, let's have a little wander along the beach. Well, it's a lovely beach here. Now, there are restrictions on some of the beaches for dogs. I'll put a little map up, but where I am now, it is dog friendly all year round. So a lovely walk on the beach, but lovely soft sand, perfect conditions for some Whippet Zoomies. Oh, thirsty work, those uh, zoomies. Well, Logan certainly enjoyed those zoomies on the beach. Right, let's uh, kick on with the walk. Now, we will be heading uh, westwards, but initially we're going to be heading eastwards towards uh, Highcliff Castle to explore around there. We're just making our way through the Steamer Point Woodland Nature Reserve. It was originally part of the gardens and land of High Cliff Castle, which we're shortly going to see. Dogs are allowed in here. There's about 24 acres, I think, although I have seen some sources say 27 acres. And the name Steamer Point, well, the late owner, Charles Stewart, used an old paddle steamer as a site office during the construction of the castle. And the old steamer boat had been beached in a small inlet and jammed between two trees in and around 1830. It became a, a beach house for 60 years but fell into disuse and was derelict at the start of the 20th century. Steamer Point Lodge was the former warden's residence and it's now a holiday let. Well we're continuing to make our way towards the castle through the, the nature reserve and oh, it's rather pleasant in here. Little ponds and birds tweeting away, a few ducks. It really is quite uh, enchanting. Yeah, there's some, some yellow iris on the, the bank over there as well. Well, this is the rather magnificent Highcliff Castle, <laughs> but it isn't actually a castle. It's situated high on the cliffs at Highcliff and it was built between 1831 and 1836 by Charles Stuart, the first Baron Stuart de Rothsey, in very much a Gothic revival style. And it's near the site of Highcliff House, which in turn had been built in the 1770s by his grandfather, the third Earl of Butte. The original Highcliff House only stood for about 38 years before the sea erosion destabilised it and all that remains of that original house are the two entrance lodges. Now, Charles Stuart was a diplomat and, amongst other things, uh, was ambassador to France. Indeed, he was with the Duke of Wellington in Brussels shortly before the Battle of Waterloo. 
The gardens of the new house, Highcliffe Castle, were designed by Capability Brown. And many famous folk have visited here over the years, including Kaiser Wilhelm, William Gladstone and Nancy Mitford. And it has a long and interesting history. In the 1950s, it became a children's convalescence home and it was bought by three local businessmen in 1967, just after it had suffered a, a major fire. Interestingly, <laughs> it had another fire shortly afterwards. Anyway, it became neglected and ruined, and in 1977 it was compulsory purchased by Christchurch Council when the grounds and beach were open to the public. It's still owned by the council today and has been restored. The house is open to the public. Uh, no dogs are allowed inside, but they are allowed in the grounds and it's used for events and weddings and uh, I think it's free to look around the grounds but uh, you have to pay to actually visit inside. Well it's a pretty impressive place isn't it? Okay well this is as far east as we're going. We're now going to start heading westwards for the main part of the walk. Well, just by Steamer Point, uh, there's this old radar position between 1948 and 1980. This was a trials ground for Ministry of Defence Signals Research and Development. Uh, and, uh, well, there was a radar disc here, about 40 metres in diameter and housed under a structure that looked a bit like a, a beehive. And I have seen some old pictures on the net, but these days it's just the base that's left. Oh, we're making our way along a little promenade. This part of the beach, uh, dogs aren't allowed on the beach, but they can be on a lead on the promenade. And the distance there, I think that's Avon Beach, which is actually privately owned. And it's got beach huts that can be rented for the day as well as uh, annual rents. I think there's a very nice uh, eatery there, the Noisy Lobster Restaurant. Well, we're just coming into Muddiford now. A few interesting houses to look out for. This one here, I think, is called Gundymore House, built in 1796 for the poet William Stuart Rose. And, well, it's said to have been built to resemble a Turkish tent. And I, well, I suppose it does in a way. And this house here is called the Anchorage, and it was originally called the Elmhurst built in 1870 by the politician Viscount Berry, renamed in 1889. I think it's now a nursing home. Well, we're making good progress on the walk, but it's a very warm day and I've got plenty of water for myself and Logan. We've got plenty of breaks. Make sure we go in the shade from time to time. But, well, we passed this lovely little place uh, with, uh, called The Raft uh, with the uh, proprietor Andy. Had a long chat with him and trying some of his ice cream. So I'm having a, looks like a cherry and vanilla and they do special dog ice cream. And the third house that I wanted to point out to you guys, I'm only gonna be able to see a glimpse of it from here, is Sand Hills. It was the holiday home of the, the Right Honourable George Rose MP and was built in 1785. Apparently King George III visited here a few times, but it's now all a, a holiday park, I believe. Well, we've made our way to Muddiford Quay. It's uh, basically the entrance to Christchurch Harbour, where the River Avon and 
River Star, the two big rivers in Hampshire and uh, Dorset end here, as well as the smaller river Mood and the, I think it's the Bure Brook. But the present quay was constructed in the 1940s. Before then, the haven, as it was then known, was just sloping beaches and the channel over to the sandbank over there is called the Run. And just looking over from Muddiford Quay to Muddiford Sandbank over there, I mean, the sand spit joins onto Hengitsbury Head and forms a natural barrier between Christchurch Harbour and the sea. Now we will be going onto the sandbank but we'll need to catch the ferry to get there. And there is the Haven House Inn. I think there are some cottages that are now called Dutch cottages built in the 17th century and uh, they were called collectively Haven House and then one of the cottages were called Haven House Inn in 1699. And then just to the right there's uh, the RNLI station. And there was a lifeboat recorded here as far back as 1804. The first inflatable boat operated here was in 1963 and the present station opened in 2003. Now it was around these parts that the Battle of Muddiford took place on the 15th of July 1784. There was a skirmish between smugglers and customs and excise officers and one officer died and at a subsequent trial one of the smugglers was executed. It was certainly a big smuggling area around these parts in days gone by. Now that uh, black building on the sandbank on the other side there is indeed the Black House, built in 1848. It was once a boat builder's house and I think these days it's a holiday let. Go, right. There we go. Oh, where are we going to sit? Up here. Well, folks, we're now on the uh, the Muddyford Ferry, and Logan's got his uh, pirate bandana on. It's not going to be a long journey, but it should be fun. Well, this is definitely the way to travel on a glorious day at Muddyford. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, <laughs> good boy. Yes, good lad. Back on dry land. Well, we enjoyed our little trip on the ferry there. Of course, we've got to take the ferry on the return journey. So we're now on the uh, sandbank, and uh, it's certainly changed over the years. In fact, if you look at an 1896 map, it was much bigger than it is today, especially if you uh, sort of superimpose it over a current aerial map. Right, we need to carry on heading westwards. Now, do you want a little cool down after that uh, ferry journey? The waves aren't quite as rough on this side as they are on the seaside. And we can almost go up to chest height. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't drink it, that's uh, salt. I've got plenty of uh, fresh water for you. Look nice and cool, looks very relaxing. <laughs> Come on. Good boy. And these are the, the beach huts on the sandbank that I was talking about earlier. And they're very, very well presented and in good order, aren't they? And the sand here. <laughs> 
it is so, I don't know, is, is a sandy a silly word to use, but it really is a, a luxurious sand. Ah, now a handy little map. So we've made our way Muddyford Quay. We've now taken the ferry to the Muddyford Jetty. Um, and we're going to now follow a footpath up to Warren Hill, past the Quarry Lake, over to the double dikes. And then we're going to pick up the land train. And then that's going to save our legs all the way back to the Muddyford Jetty. Oh, wow. Star Valley Way. I wonder if this is the start of it. Um, Christchurch to Star Head, 64 miles. It's, uh, the reason I mention it, we've come across sections of the Star Valley Way so many times during previous walks in other parts of Dorset. So I wonder if this is the end. Could be. We're just making our way towards the head now. It's uh, very much a dedicated nature reserve and has been since 1990. And it's owned by the Christchurch Council. And look, I think that's an egret out there on the little muddy flat area. So the head's named after the legendary Jutis leader Higgist from the fifth century, but there are many other theories. And it's been inhabited since the Stone Age and there was continuous occupation through the ages. I mean, there are Bronze Age barrows and Iron Age fortifications around here and the Romans may have used it. But the area wasn't really subsequently occupied again until Alfred the Great built a harbour as a defence against the raiders from overseas. Uh, he built up and fortified the town that became Christchurch on the northern side of the harbour. pit stop for some cracking views over the sea. Well, I'll tell you what, the sea looks quite Mediterranean today. A chap out there on his jet ski, I always think those look fun. And of course in the very far distance there's a Jurassic Coast, an old friend of ours, and that must be old Harry Rocks in the very far distance. And then just slowly Panning round. So I'm filming on a Friday in June. It's not that busy down there on the beach. And then very far distance over there is the Isle of Wight and I can just make out the needles as well. here on the, the head there's a lot of evidence of quarrying it was certainly heavily quarried in the Victorian era and there's a quarry pond here uh, the quarry was closed in the 1870s and to protect wildlife the inlet of the quarry to Christchurch Harbour was drained and the pond created and uh, an old map shows where canals were made to allow stone from the quarry to get into the harbour on the northern side of the head. Wow, what a terrific view. This is looking back well, where we've been. So there's the, the uh, Muddyford Sandbanks, there's Christchurch Harbour, Muddyford Quay, and then uh, behind the trees in a very far distance somewhere Highcliffe Castle. But oh, they're quite breathtaking views from here. Uh, the Hengitsbury Head National Coast Watch Lookout Building, and on the side, uh, painting. I don't think that's a, a Banksy. Oh no, it's got Hen Dog at the bottom. That's a different artist altogether. Ah, uh, again, some 
quite stunning views. I guess that must be Christchurch Priory over in the far distance, not 100% sure. And oh, look, a trick point. And regular viewers will know that needs to be bagged in the customary manner. <laughs> well, we're nearly at our most westerly point. There's a sort of, uh, I think it's Hiker's Cafe just in the far distance and that's where we pick up the little train to come back. But from here there's a very good view of a couple of um, uh, double dikes uh, which date from the Iron Age. It's basically two banks and ditches. The inner bank is three metres high with a ditch and I think the ditch is about three and a half metres deep and the outer ditch has pretty much been worn away by erosion. But basically the the head was a, a fortified settlement and port around here, so uh, it was a very important place many years ago. We're well, just coming down off the, the head and there's a monument here and I, it looks like it's called Layers of Bournemouth, <laughs> erected in 2018. A little man-made pond here, but uh, there's a little information board right by, so I'm guessing it's designed to help with natterjack toads that live around these parts. To take the train back. <laughs> right. All right, thank you. All right, in we go. Oops. Up. Good boy. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's just about enough room for us. Oh, we're in. Well, it's such a hot day, we decided to take the little train back from one end of the head to the other to pick up the ferry. We should get some good views along the way. Well, that was certainly a train journey and a half. <laughs> the bumpiest ride I think I've ever been on. I'll be amazed if any of the GoPro footage is any good. It'll really test out the image stabilisation. It was quite a bumpy road. Right, we're going to get back on the ferry. At least we know that'll be a little bit of a, a smoother ride back. Fingers crossed. Hopefully this will be a bit smoother than that train ride. <laughs> Good boy. There we go. This way. Good boy. There we go. Yeah. Oh. Oh.
Thank you, Sean. Nice to have met you again. Yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> I just uh, said hello to, or goodbye to Sean, who's a viewer of the channel. Well, folks, we've made it to our final destination, the Haven House Inn, for a pint of Ringwood Best. And my prawn sandwich is on its way. Oh, lovely. My little sweetie. Good boy. Well, folks, we've come to the end of the walk. We thought we'd do the end scene here by the beach with the waves crashing against the shoreline. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. Ah, no! <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Ah.